This video is one in a series of videos that cover database topics in three themes. We look at Oracle APEX, Application Express for web applications, relational database concepts for designing and building databases, and SQL, the programming language for working with a relational database. If you want to work with the video series, you can go to this URL to get the scripts and handouts. In the previous Apex video, Apex 23, we used Query Builder in Apex to write the SQL code for a couple of reports. In one of those examples, we actually created a view, which is a stored query. I want to take a look at the SQL syntax for creating a view. So I'm logged in to Apex as one of the developers in the Workspace Animal Shelter. I'm going to Actually, I could, I could go into daily operations and run that, and I can see the report that's based on the stored query. So if I edit this page, page 102 in my case, it doesn't matter what your page number is, click on the report region, we see that it's, this report is using a view called v underscore animals underscore available. I'm going to right click under SQL Workshop and open up Object Browser. Then I'll switch from a list of tables to a list of views and select the view to see the SQL code. This was created by Query Builder. I'm going to copy this into Notepad. I'll pause the video while I hit returns so that it's displayed over several lines. And I actually changed my mind. I'm going to copy this into SQL Developer because there's a format feature that will make this much easier to read. So I've already used SQL Developer to log in to the animal shelter schema, animal underscore shelter, not to be confused with animal space shelter, which is a workspace in Apex. So I'm going to do a right click and format. So now we get this formatting of the command and it spreads it out, but it's much easier to read. So let's look at the syntax. If you're going to create a view, you need a command that says create or replace view. You don't actually need the word force. It's a good idea to always have replace, although it's not required. If you just have create view and then the name of the view, if you decide you want to update it, modify it in any way, you would have to delete it before you could do a simple create view. That's why create or replace is most commonly used. This is the name of the view in double quotes. It doesn't actually have to be in double quotes unless you care about upper and lower case. That statement is followed by the column aliases you want to identify each column that's used in the view. These are in double quotes, although they don't necessarily have to be. However, if you want spacing, like estimated size, EST space, S-I-Z-E, then you need to use the double quotes. This listing of column aliases must correspond to the list of columns in the select clause. So the create view command followed by column aliases in parentheses as and then the select clause that gives us the data from the tables that match up with these columns. If you're listing the columns in the same order as what you have up here in the column aliases, then you don't need this as name, as category, and so on and so forth. After we've listed the columns for the view, then we have the list of one or more tables that we're getting the data from. So we have a list of tables here. What Query Builder is doing here, what, the reason we're seeing the table name twice, Query Builder lists the table name, space, and then followed by what would be the table alias. In the WHERE clause, we are joining the tables. If we have three tables, we must have at least two joins. As a rule of thumb, the number of tables minus one gives you how many joins 
you must have. In this case, we're joining in the WHERE clause instead of using the enter join command. If you use the enter join command, it all happens up here. So let's run this and I'll do some modifications to the command. So let's run this. I will change this to, I'm going to say view 2 so I don't overwrite what I already have. So I'm going to run this command. And we see view 2 has been created. If I want to actually see the content of that, and actually come back here to Apex and refresh, I now see view 2. I'm going to switch over to SQL commands and do a select asterisk from v2 animal and run that. So it runs. Come back to the command itself and I'm going to I'm going to pause the video and take out all these column aliases. This is a column alias that follows the name of a column just like in a table this is a table alias that follows the name of the table. This is where we definitely see some unnecessary clutter. So I'm going to delete some of this. I'll pause the video. So I've removed the column aliases in the select clause. Now again, this list of column aliases must correspond exactly with the order of the columns in the select clause if you're not going to put something down here such as as name. But I want to show you that some of that text is just not necessary. I've also stripped out the table aliases. So I'm going to run this. And we see v3 created. If I come back here and change this to version 3 and run it, we're getting the same result. So it runs without all that clutter. The last thing I think I'll do just to illustrate the use of the table alias is I'm going to do B for dominant breed, that's the table alias. And this will just be ST for status, and this will just be A for animal. Just as a side note, often you will see examples where you have one letter used as a table alias. And that certainly cuts down on the typing, but perhaps because I've been a teacher and had to read a lot of other people's code, I do not like single letter aliases. I would rather have something that's two or three or even four characters that reminds me what that alias is for. So actually I'm going to do this, breed, stat, and then just do any. So if I try to run this, and I'll make this version four, we have compilation errors. The reason is once the from clause defines the table alias, we have to use that. So if I have a table name anywhere in the select clause, I need to replace it with the new table alias. So all of these animals have to be any. I'll pause the video and do that. So I've replaced all the full table names with the table aliases defined in the from clause. I have to replace those in the select clause and in the where clause. Now let's try running this before we got compilation errors. So I'll execute this and it says view 4 has been created and I can come back, come back to SQL workshop or SQL commands in Apex and run it. So the output hasn't changed on any of these but we've seen some of the variation in the code. In the other SQL video for Apex 23, I'll talk about plus notation for joining tables.